In this video, you're going to learn how to tell whether you have a slant asymptote of a rational function and how to find that slant asymptote. We'll also talk about how to graph it. So if we look at this first example here, you can see this is a rational function. Rational just means a ratio. So you have like a polynomial divided by a polynomial here. And what you want to notice is you want to focus in on this highest power term in the numerator and this highest power term in the denominator. So see how this is x to the third and this is x to the second. So when the degree in the numerator is one higher than the degree in the denominator, that tells us that we're going to have a slant or a diagonal or an oblique asymptote. Now the question is, is how do we find that slant asymptote? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do some long division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say how many times does x squared minus 9 go into the numerator, which is x cubed plus x squared minus 6x, and I'll just say plus 0 since there isn't a constant. Sometimes it helps to put in the placeholders, like see how there's not an x here. But I'll show you how to do the long division. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to say, hmm, x squared goes into x cubed how many times? Or you could say, what's x cubed divided by x squared? Or what I personally like to do is I like to say, what times x squared equals x cubed? So in that case, it's going to be x. And when I distribute the x to both of these terms, I get x cubed minus 9x. Now what we want to do is we want to subtract, or what some students like to do is change the signs to the opposite, and then add straight down, because subtraction is just like adding the opposite. So if we do that, you can see that first term cancels out. We get x squared plus 3x plus 0. So now same idea, we can say what times x squared is equal to x squared, or we could say what's x squared divided by x squared, or we could say how many times does x squared go into x squared. But again, I like to say what times this first term equals this first term, so that when we subtract, that first term cancels out. So in this case, you can see that's going to be 1. So 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times negative 9 is negative 9. Notice I'm just lining up the like terms. And we're going to subtract now, or you can change the signs to the opposite, and add straight down. Again, notice that first term cancels out, and we've got 3x plus 9. Now when you get to where the degree here is lower than the degree here, this is going to be your remainder. So this is x to the first, this is x to the second. So what we do is we put our remainder over our divisor. So our, our final quotient here would be x plus 1 plus 3x plus 9 over x squared minus 9. Now what happens is, as x gets larger and larger, meaning as we go to the right here, okay, because the denominator's degree here is higher than the numerator's degree, this term is going to go to 0. So you'll oftentimes hear people say, just ignore the remainder. And that's why, because as x gets larger, this term basically goes to 0. So our, hor uh, our, sorry, our slant asymptote is y is equal to x plus 1. And if we were to graph that, you can see this is in the slope-intercept form, like our y equals mx plus b form. The y-intercept is 1, okay, that crosses the y-axis right here at 1, and the slope is 1. See, this is 1x, so we're going rise 1, run 1. This is like 1 over 1. Now, you don't want to put like a point here, because then you'll mistakenly think when you're graphing your function that that's like a point that the graph goes through. So let's just do it like this. We're going to have a y-intercept of 1, and a slope of 1, so rise 1, run 1. So see how I'm just kind of rise 1, run 1? I'm just following that slope there of 1. And I'm not putting any points. I'm just using like a dashed or a dotted line. So that's going to be your slant asymptote. Now, if you want to learn more about how to graph not just the slant asymptotes, but like the vertical asymptotes, or if there's horizontal asymptotes, or how to find the x and y intercepts, or how to figure out what the graph looks like as you approach those asymptotes. That's what I talk about in that video right there. So follow me over there and we'll get some more practice graphing rational functions. I'll see you there.